So I get this question a lot on my channel, like what settings did you use for this video? How did you get these skin tones to look natural? In this video, I'm gonna go over my favorite settings for the GX85, and these are the same settings that I also use on my G85, which I'm filming with right now, and the GH5, the G9, G95, G420. It's actually quite simple, so let's get into it. Greetings Aqua fam, it is Ben Aqua. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, you know what to do, subscribe, like, all that fun stuff. All right, so we're here with the GX85. This is my kind of go-to answer when people ask what settings I use. What they're usually asking is what color profile I use to get really natural looking colors right out of the camera. So a lot of people will use kind of log profiles, Cine like V, Cine like D, but me personally, I don't really like to mess with the footage too much in post. I'd rather it just look good in the camera so I don't have to like spend a million years editing and doing the perfect color balance and stuff later in post. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the color profile. That's probably the most important thing when it comes to setting up your video in addition to shutter speed, aperture, that kind of thing. So to get to your color profile, you wanna to go to menu and then go over here to photo style. I guess it's called photo style, not profile, but whatever, same concept. And it's simply set to natural. This is what I use for almost everything. You can, you can kind of scroll through and see, you know, there's different types of scenery, portrait, custom, standard, vivid, and that'll change like the contrast, saturation, and just like the general look of the color science in your video. <laughs> this is the simple answer when people ask me what settings I use. I just set it to natural and then that's it. You can increase the contrast if you want by just going over left and right. You can increase the sharpness if you want. You can increase or decrease noise reduction. And then there's also saturation. But like I said, I don't really like to mess with settings and stuff too much. And I don't wanna give myself extra work in post later. So I just set my photo style to natural and I don't touch any of these settings right here, and I just use the default natural setting. And to me, that actually looks the best. So that's kind of the quick answer when people are like, what settings do you use for your G85, GX85, et cetera? And then there's other settings that are just general video settings. So I usually have my video mode set to manual so I can adjust the aperture and the shutter speed manually. I usually shoot all my videos at 24 frames per second. The 24 frames per second to me just looks better. It looks a little more cinematic and smooth. So my camera is set to 4K and 24 frames per second. And you can see that over here where it says 4K, 100 megabytes per second, 24P. The 24P is basically 24 frames per second. The other settings that you wanna mess with are your aperture and your shutter speed. The aperture is gonna depend a lot on what lens you're using. So in this case, I'm using the 42.5 F 1.7 lens. And usually for most of my lenses to get like the most bokeh, the most background blur, foreground blur, I use the lowest aperture possible. So right here you can see that it's set at 1.7 and that's the f-stop, that's the aperture on the lens. That's the lowest this 42.5 millimeter lens will go in terms of aperture. And what that means is the lower the number, the wider the aperture. So the more light is going to come into the lens and also the, you're gonna get more background blur. And then this 50 right here is the shutter speed. And that's just you know the, the speed at which the shutter is opening and closing. And typically the rule for shutter speed is you wanna set it to something that's about twice the amount of your frames per second. So I like to shoot with 24 frames per second. So 50 is the closest to 24 frames per second. It just makes the footage look a lot smoother and it won't look super jittery or weird. The other setting you're gonna to wanna to mess with is the ISO. Right now it's set to ISO 640 but you can always, you know, you can decrease it to make your video look darker if it looks too bright, or you can increase it. So you'll see this meter right here that says zero, and then there's like little lines right next to it. So I basically just increase or decrease until the light meter right there just sets itself to zero. So you can see right there it says plus minus zero. So that means I'm pretty much good to go. It means the exposure looks nice and even. But just remember when you adjust your ISO to anything higher than you know 400 or 800, on Micro Four Thirds cameras, they kind of suffer in low light. So the higher the ISO, the more grainy your footage might look. So if that's a concern for you, you wanna be aware of that. And then the other setting I mess with usually is the white balance. And right now I have it set to a custom white balance, but if that doesn't look right, if it looks too blue or too yellow or something, you can always change it to auto white balance, which is kind of the easiest. Or you can set a custom white balance, which is indicated by one, two, 
three, four, et cetera. And there you can dial in a custom white balance based on a lighting scenario, whatever you're in. So if it's not changing a lot, I would highly recommend using a custom white balance setting like one of these. And if you wanna know how to set up a custom white balance setting, I did a video on that recently and I'll link that in the description below. But really that's it. The main answer to what settings I use or I use natural color mode or color profile. I think it looks the best. Skin tones tend to look pretty good. Shadow, saturation, everything just looks kind of balanced and even. And and I shoot all my video at 4K 24P. I use the lowest aperture I can possibly use with each lens. In this case, it's 1.7. The shutter speed I set to 50, and then I change the ISO manually until it kind of evens out at zero right there. You can see it fluctuates a little bit above or minus zero, but that's not a huge deal to me. And that's really it. So yeah, it's really that simple to set up your camera to get really nice, even looking skin tones and kind of like a natural color field, a natural color profile on your camera. I really don't think you have to tweak a lot of these settings that much to get a really good look because Panasonic's color science already looks really good in my opinion. Like I have a Sony a6500, which is an amazing camera, but the colors always look a little bit off and I usually have to tweak them a little bit in post, especially when I'm shooting video. But for some reason, Panasonic cameras usually just nail colors that look really natural and for me it really heightens my process it really makes it a lot easier for me to pump something out or to make something look good without having to mess with it too much by just setting it to that natural setting and just letting the camera do its thing. But of course there's other things like aperture and shutter speed and white balance that will affect your overall video. So it's not just as easy as setting your camera to the natural profile and going, but for most purposes, that's usually what I end up doing. For this kind of studio video where the lighting doesn't change that much, I actually have a custom white balance set up, but I'm still using the natural profile on my camera. But yeah, that's it for this video. Pretty simple, pretty easy. If you have any questions about color profiles or techniques, let me know in the comments or if you have suggestions for other videos, love to hear that. Hit me up on social media at B3NAQUA and that's my Instagram, that's my Twitter. Like, subscribe, you know what to do. Notification bell, you know, smash that as well. Hopefully this video is helpful for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.